Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 17th of June 2020 and yesterday we produced a late video entitled US Economy Shows Some Sign of Recovery But Is It Only Temporary? where we highlighted the recent economic figures starting with last week's jobs report and now this week's positive retail sales figures of plus 17.7% for May and a positive industrial production figure for May of 1.4% is showing at least tentatively that perhaps the US and maybe the global economy has to some extent bottomed. We do ask the question in yesterday's video whether this may only be a temporary phenomena because of the growing fear of a second wave of COVID-19. Now today we thought we would follow on from yesterday's video. Now, some may ask why we're looking at these economic pictures rather than directly speaking about silver. But the reason is that these economic factors directly affect the price of silver and give us a guide to some extent of where we can expect silver and gold and precious metal prices to move towards and within what time scale. So firstly, let's look at the headlines most traders will be watching when they come into work of a morning if not before they left home, providing, of course, they're not working from home in the first place. So if we take a brief look at some of the headlines on the major news agency websites, we can see for Bloomberg today a number of headlines, including Germany's cabinet okays $70 billion in debt to combat recession, Stocks add to rally, shrug off infection concerns. UK looks to Australia and New Zealand for trade deal to boost exports. Forget this year's high for European stocks, strategists warn. European car sales show first signs of recovery. We also have on Reuters... I don't know if you can see it quite here. It might be just a bit above the line. UK inflation hits four-year low on oil, oil price fall, COVID impact. UK eyes billion pound boost from Australia, New Zealand trade deals. HSBC revives 35,000 job cut plan after pandemic pause. London stocks gain on recovery optimism. And also, if we take a brief look at some of the business news, compliance with OPEC plus oil output cuts 87% in May. And finally, cheaper energy slows Eurozone inflation as expected in May. So, as we can see, most of the economic news appears to be, if not immediately positive, then quite bullish or optimistic about future trade deals and relatively good economic statistics. Yes, we use the words relatively because six months ago we would have been concerned at what we now view as positive news. So let's now take a brief look at how markets have and are performing against the background of this information and a look at precious metals including Bitcoin. Now we're producing this video early on Wednesday morning. So by the time it is published, things may have changed a little. If we take a brief look at how equity markets performed yesterday and are performing today, a quick look on Bloomberg, we can see, <clears throat> as we reported in fact last night, the Dow Jones was up 2%, the S&P up 1.9%, the Nasdaq up 1.75%, the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index up just over one8 and today, interestingly, the Euro Stocks 50 index is up 13, or up nearly, well, 0.4%. The FTSE 100 index is up 41 at 6,284. The DAX index is up 55. All of these are up about half a percent. And the CAC index is also up a half, just over half a percent. 
Overnight, though, Asia Pacific, the Nikkei fell a little, but it has been performing moderately well. As you can see, over the last month, it's up 12%. And the Hang Seng Index is also up um, 137 points today so far, uh, or actually closed now, but up was up 137 points. Uh, and the MSCI Asia Pacific Index is also up. Interestingly, if you look at the year-to-date figures, it shows us that over the year, the main three US stock markets are up, albeit in differing amounts. The Dow up just over 0.7%, or point, uh, just below 0.7. The S&P is up 8, and the NASDAQ is up 26. Whereas in Europe, it's a slightly different picture, and UK equities have actually performed quite poorly. Some would argue it makes them appear quite cheap, but that's for another video. And Asia Pacific, the Nikkei is up 6. The Hang Seng, though, is down 10. Not surprising for what's been happening there. Now, if we take a brief look as to what's been happening to gold, uh, since the market closed on Friday, gold was $17.31. It's currently, as you can see, $17.16. So it's down $15.00. It fell dramatically, as you can see here on Monday. It, uh, when I say dramatically, it looks dramatic on the chart, but we are only talking um, about 20, 20 odd dollars. But nevertheless, it did fall quite dramatically to 1705, recovered then sharply, and is bouncing along at this sort of, I suppose, 17, 17, 15 to 17. 30, yeah, more or less 30 level. Uh, although it has dipped very briefly if we look at the today chart so far. Hopefully that will come up quickly. In dollar terms, we can see in the last, what time is it here? 8.20 and we're producing this at 10.40. So it has fallen back some $12.00 in the last couple of hours. Now if we look at silver in dollar terms we can see that silver closed if you like at 1751. It's currently 1746 so it's just a very minor fall but again like gold it, it dipped quite significantly in fact, just above the bottom. Oh, okay, I give up. I said it would hold firm at $17. It did touch $16.98.50 for a very brief moment. Um, but as you people who watch our channel know, we say the trading range is $17.50 to $18.50. And then the outlier is $17, which is an extremely strong base. And you can see momentarily it dipped just below 17 and then immediately jumped back up again. And if we look at what's happening today, if it's reflecting gold in the last couple of hours, it's probably fallen. Whereas actually that isn't what has happened in the last, well, it has slightly here, I suppose. It's gone from 1748, yeah, 49, down <clears throat> to 1745, but it's tiny. So you've had, you've, uh, you can just see the graph does make it, I have to admit to you, the graph does make it appear far more volatile than it is when in reality you're only talking about 10 or 15 cents sort of difference broadly apart from that dip there. But it gives you an idea that there's no absolute current pattern. I can We can draw various lines on various points and it's actually not easy, certainly well, not on a day anyway, to do a trend line. Uh, if we look at platinum just very quickly, might as well run through the other precious metals. Uh, I find this fascinating. I'm not sure everybody else does, but I do. And you're looking at platinum in dollar terms. I'm looking at dollars because all these commodities are originally priced in dollars. You can see it started at 820, it's currently 824, so it's actually up four dollars. Palladium, same basis. 
in dollar terms we will find that palladium started or ended last week at 1938 it's currently at 1936 so it's just down two dollars and Bitcoin we've been talking quite a bit about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin as it is featuring a lot more in investment managers and and investment advisors language recently and you can see here Bitcoin is currently 9,493 on on a week to date basis it's down $246 it was it has actually touched $10,000 and it's been as low as 8,910 you can see the considerable volatility in Bitcoin okay that's that so as we can see precious metals are more or less unchanged Bitcoin is down a little while equities are still rising now on Monday we produced a video entitled when is gold really going to take off where we highlighted the various reasons why gold has not risen dramatically and what it would take within the economy and outside of it to do so so for now however the economy appears to be on some form of recovery that said of course the market is fickle and investors are nervous we shall be more interested frankly in Thursday's data particularly the weekly jobs report again but meanwhile we're keeping a close eye on what other central banks are announcing this week and this could have what we believe would prove to be a positive impact on the US dollar but we have to wait to see whether that materializes what do you think do share your thoughts thank you so much for listening and if you haven't already done so please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative and if so please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so Please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.